Hey, what's up? It's Deanna, and today is story time. Okay, so growing up in an Italian family, um, back in the 70s and 80s, well, probably even before that, probably eons before that, um, growing up in an Italian family, you were always terrified of this, this little mere object made out of wood. And uh, if you're not Italian, you don't know what the hell this was used for. It was not only used for stirring the sauce, okay? All right, so this object here, um, struck fear in the hearts of every Italian American child living in the USA. And now that I look at it at uh, 48 years old, actually I'm 47, but going to be 48 soon. I'm an old fucker. All right. This scared the shit out of me. And now that I look at it, my God, it's tiny as shit. It's not as threatening and scary as I ever imagined it. So here's my story. Okay. Growing up in New York City in Queens, New York, my mother being an Italian American, um, anytime she wanted to threaten me to do something I didn't want to do, she would pull this out, this weapon. Now, this weapon was actually more terrifying than, um, hmm, what weapons are terrifying besides, uh, nine millimeter pistols, 12 gauge shot, shotguns. Oh, the belt. Yeah. That's another thing that, that was the father's job. The father's job was to get the belt out, but the Italian mother's job was to grab this and whack you on the ass as hard as she could. So whenever I was bad, this would come out. And here's the story. So when I was about uh, five years old, I was, I was set to go into kindergarten. And uh, I was going to be attending school. I was all excited um, for attending school. When suddenly, one day, my mom was always on the phone. And back then, we had phones with cords. And the cords were like coil cords that would stretch out like 10 feet across the room. We didn't have cordless phones back then. Jesus Christ, can I even uh, tell you how old I am? But we didn't have cordless phones. So what would happen is my mom would be gabbing on the phone, gossiping, talking to like every Tom, Dick, and Harry about who did this and who did that. And so I was in the mood for chicken noodle soup. And so I opened up, I was five, I opened up a can of Campbell's chicken noodle soup put it in a pot and said, mom, can I have this for lunch? And with her cigarette dangling um, off her lip, by the way, it was like it was pasted onto the bottom of her. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, God, guys, she's dead now. I miss her. Um, her cigarette was like pasted to the bottom of her lip. And she said, okay, let me turn on the gas. And she wasn't paying attention. And so what happened was, was I was hungry and the shit was boiling and I was like, I was tapping her on the shoulder and I kept saying, mom, my soup is done. Mom, my soup is done. And she was like, shh, quiet. I'm on the phone. And so I was like, okay, I'll just take the soup myself. So I took the handle and it turned out the pots of the seventies, it was like the late seventies were made out of aluminum, the handles, um, too. And they didn't have like grips on them made out of rubber so you didn't burn your fucking hands. And so I grabbed the handle and the whole entire pot of Campbell's chicken noodle soup actually poured all over me and spilt and burned me. Yes, burned me. So my mom rushed me to the hospital and I had second degree burns from my chin all the way down to my ankles. So what happened was, was um, I was set to go into kindergarten and Instead of wearing clothes, um, well, I did wear clothes, but pretty much from my chin down to my ankles, I had to be bandaged. I am not shitting you. Both legs, both arms, my torso, even up to my neck and my chin had a bandage on it. And so when my mom went to sign me up for kindergarten, um, <laughs> the school took one look at me and said, uh, no, mummies are not allowed to attend school. And so my mom was like, what do you mean mummies can't attend school? Look, she's just got burns. Um, she's wearing her clothes over the burns. Um, cause back then, you know, I wore like neat little skirts and dresses and they saw my bandaged up legs and I couldn't wear shoes that were normal because the toe part had to be cut out to accommodate the bandages. And so they said, well, what if another kid bangs into her? Um, we don't want the liability. So my mom went from school to school to school to try to convince them to, um, you know, admit me until one such school, PS60, shout out to PS60 in Woodhaven, New York, uh, Queens, New York, that is, um, actually said she can attend, but we don't have room in kindergarten. Uh, we'll have to put her in first grade. Now I was five. Um, at this point, all I basically knew was the alphabet song and all the other kids um, in the first grade class knew everything. Basically, in my little mind, they knew everything. They were so much wiser and smarter than me. At this point, I didn't even know how to play hopscotch um, because I didn't go to kindergarten. And uh, they did. 
and they knew all this, the games and what have you of, you know, what they learned in kindergarten. So I sat there pretty much by myself. I'm an only child, by the way, no brothers or sisters. And I felt like left out. Plus I had bandages covering me. I was a freak. And so all the other kids were reading ahead of me. And so the teacher um, gave us homework to do. I remember the first day of school, the teacher said, here, take this home. You have to do this. And it was what was known as rexograph sheets. It wasn't copy paper like we have now with something copied on it. It was called rexograph sheet, sheets. And the homework was printed on it and you were supposed to do it. And it smelled, by the way, it smelled like glorious actually when you smelled the ink on these rexograph sheets they made you actually high i think <laughs> and so i went home and my mom said where's your homework and i said i'm not doing it and she said what i said no i'm playing i'm not doing that that's stupid and she said what did you say to me and i said i'm not doing my my homework and i had a mouth on me so what came out this came out and she smacked the shit out of me and the harder she smacked me the more i was stubborn the more i said that doesn't hurt and then she hit me again and I, got, I said, that doesn't hurt. And she hit me again and I said, that doesn't hurt until I was black and blue. All right, so I couldn't read, I couldn't write. All the other kids were already doing that. So my mom sat with me every single day and I refused to, to learn because I was so stubborn. So I told her the only way I will listen to her is if she buys a chalkboard and with chalk and an eraser and I wanted to play school. And yeah, I, I was a weird kid. God, I'm still weird. And so she actually complied. She bought a chalkboard and she was teaching me how to read. And what happened is every single day she was working with me, I got so good at reading at five years old. I was reading the Daily News, which was a, our daily newspaper in New York City, the New York Post, the Newsday. I was reading Kurt Vonnegut novels. Um, yeah, my mother had like, uh, oh my goodness, all these books. I was reading Gone with the Wind. Um, and so I became so advanced um, that the teacher actually told my mother to please stop what she was doing because um, I was just like reading at like 12th grade level at five years old. So the wooden spoon actually worked. But so what I did one day, I saw one of these commercials and they used to be commercials on the TV. And back then we didn't have what we have now. Um, where you can just order some shit on Amazon and they deliver it to your house. You pay with credit card. Back then, they used to have something called Time Life. Time Life, like Time Magazine, but they used to sell products on the commercials. And uh, they would sell like CDs and books and all this crap. And so you would call up the number, the 1-800 toll-free number, and you would say, okay, I want to place an order. You'd give their address, your you know, your address, and they would deliver it to your house with UPS. Back then, the mailman didn't really deliver packages. You had the brown guy, you know, in the brown uniform from UPS. And they would knock on the door or ring the bell and you would actually write them out a check or give them cash. <laughs> you would pay the UPS man for whatever you ordered. So <laughs> what happened is I saw a commercial much like this. I couldn't find the original commercial, but it was like these type of commercials called Time Life. And they used to sell corny ass shit. And so basically they'd give you a phone number and I have to take this off or I'm going to get like copyrighted. And uh, yeah, and so it would tell you how much the price was, blah, blah, blah. Uh, call this number and uh, you can get this item COD, cash on delivery. So I saw Time Life Animal Books and um, <laughs> they were really expensive. I think it was like, at the time, like $150, you get a whole entire set. And it was like sets like this. Let's try to find it. Yeah, well, right now it's selling on eBay for $43.79. But you get a whole set of books. So I called up Time Life, and I put on an adult voice. <laughs> I, I impersonated my mother. And uh, all of a sudden, the doorbell rang. And I didn't tell my mother what I did. And it was the UPS man. And he said, you owe, I think it was like, I don't know, they were expensive, $150.93 or whatever the hell it was. And I thought my ass was grass. I thought my mother was going to kill me. And so I wanted these books so bad because all I did was read. That's all I did. Once she taught me how to read, she created a monster. And so um, my mom, instead of getting this out, she ended up paying the UPS guy. I swear to God, she started peeling 20s out of her pocket and paying him. So, yeah, that's uh, one of my little stories of growing up in Queens, New York, um, as a child in the 70s and 80s. So long.